Dragon Ball Z Kakarot has a lot going on. It's a huge RPG that goes from Raditz all the way through the Boo Saga, recounting the origin of Dragon Ball in more detail than pretty much any game before it. It's got epic battles the series is famous for, but it's also got other stuff, the characters goofing around, eating meals, catching fish, and uh, looking at adult magazines, because... Yeah, there's just so much stuff you can do in this game. There's tons of systems, menus, options, and stats that, if I'm totally honest here, you can get lost in pretty easily. It can be kind of overwhelming. Whether you're just starting out or you're 20 hours in. That's why we're talking about 10 things Dragon Ball Z Kakarot doesn't tell you. Starting at number 10, let's talk combat tips. It is a Dragon Ball Z, so a huge part of the game is, of course, combat. That said, the game is surprisingly light on tutorials. It pretty much just gives you a big wall of text and is like, go out, attack, do it. And that's okay, it's not a super complex system generally, but you may not realize how useful some of the more advanced techniques are at first. Probably the most difficult ability to pull off is the dodge escape, which is where you press the step button just before an enemy attack connects. You might not think to use it a whole lot because the vanish attack, you know, the attack where you press the step button while blocking, which teleports you behind the attacker and lets you attack them from behind, but actually the dodge is just the vanish attack without any drawbacks. What I mean is, yeah, the vanish attack is really good for escaping if you're stuck in a combo, but it costs a lot of key energy, and that's just energy you could be using for special attacks. However, if you dodge the incoming attack completely instead, you don't spend any extra key and you get an additional slowdown that interrupts your enemy's attacks. It's really, really good and you feel like a total badass when you pull it off, but that's the hard part. The timing on dodging is just a little bit tighter than you might expect. The invincibility frames you get on a dodge seem to be concentrated at the front of the button press, so you're quickly vulnerable after that. So you really need to time it so that you hit that step button just as the attack is about to hit you. Now, if you're just starting out, you might not think it really matters to get the hang of this, but once you hit that first real fight of the game against Nappa, being able to dodge can really, really help. The best time to practice this is against projectiles because they're easier to anticipate, so go into training and just back away from whoever you're fighting. Remember that you need to tap the step button just as you're about to get hit. The timing has to be really tight, but once you get the hang of it, you're set. Learning this crucial skill is one of the most difficult to pull off in the game, but also easily one of the most beneficial. At number nine, the menus. Yeah, they're a little confusing. Probably the weirdest thing about them is how they hide some pretty critical stuff behind the Y button or triangle on PS4. This is how you access the encyclopedia, which isn't the most important thing, but it's also how you can look at emblems in the community menu, and most importantly, the skill tree in your character menu. Just clicking on your character isn't enough. This is basically their stat screen. To actually upgrade them, you need to hit the Y button. And don't think you're done there. Once you purchase skills, don't forget to equip them. Moves will equip automatically if you've got an empty space for them, but what about these stat boosts? These are actually called know-hows, and you don't get anything from just buying them on the skill tree. You need to equip them if you want anything from them. This is something you can really easily miss. It took me a couple hours before I realized this menu was even here. And to equip a know-how, you need to go to the skill palette, press LB or RB, and that'll take you to the know-how screen. So that's literally four menus deep. It's a bit much, let's just say. The game never tells you any of this is here either. Thankfully, it's not super important. You don't unlock any of these abilities until way later, but still, it's not easy to find. You think you're hot stuff, don't you? Moving on to number eight, it's sub-stories. They're side quests, basically. You'd think there wouldn't be much to explain here, but hoo-hoo, that would make you very wrong. Here's the thing, this isn't like Witcher 3 or Fallout 4 or anything where side quests, once you see them and accept them, you can just finish whenever you want. No, in this game, if you progress too far in the story, you can miss out on them. If you continue past the point that these quests areas are available, then they're instantly failed and you don't get anything for them. Looking at the story menu, the game tells you what point the story of the quest will fail you at, but because it's just listed as the section's name rather than a number or something, it's pretty much impossible to tell when that story section will be no more. 
Normally, this wouldn't matter too much. Most people don't care about missing some little subsection once in a while, but the thing is, a lot of substories only become available after you finish previous substories, and they're usually the more interesting ones, so fair warning if you want to see the substories, and you will, that's how you get a lot of the special emblems and materials, then your best bet is to do them when they appear. Always be checking your map for that blue icon and get them cleared out before you do anything else. At number seven, it's grinding. It's an RPG, so it's totally possible to grind for experience, but should you? The answer here is no. And I'm not talking about this in like a it'll ruin the experience sort of way. I mean, purely mathematically speaking, do not grind. Trying to grind for experience and levels in this RPG is a waste of time, no matter how counterintuitive that sounds. Don't believe me? Let me present my case. Random enemies do not give you very much experience. You get a decent amount from these red aura villainous enemies you'll see sometimes, but regular enemies, better to just avoid them in most cases. Get your experience from the storyline battles or the substories. And here's the really big reason not to grind. It's Dragon Ball Z, so guess what everyone's always doing? Training. As you continue through the story, characters will just get a ton of experience for free and level up a bunch automatically, making any grinding you do before basically silly. Generally, the game keeps you at about the right level for whatever it is you're about to face, but if you want to have an edge on a boss or something, just complete some substories and eat a lot of cooked meals. Those give you permanent stat boosts on top of the temporary ones, so yeah, eat a lot of food. Goku's a hungry boy, and food is better than grinding. Don't grind. <sighs> Little twerp. At number six, money, or zenny as it's called in the Dragon Ball universe, is actually kind of a rare commodity in this game. You don't get it for progressing the story, you don't get it for finishing sub-stories, the only real way to earn money is to sell stuff. Thankfully, being you can fly around at supersonic speed and just grab stuff up off the ground, it's pretty easy to amass a gigantic horde of cooking and crafting materials to sell off. But if you didn't get this game, expecting to play Elite Dangerous Dragon Ball Edition, probably the fastest and easiest way to make money is just wish for it. Yeah, it takes a while, but eventually you'll get access to the Dragon Radar, which lets you actually collect the Dragon Balls hidden around the map and make a wish. There's really only a few options. You can refight previous bosses, get Z orbs, get rare resources, or get Zenny. Wish for Zenny and you get 30,000 bucks. And that should set you up for any healing items you could potentially need. First half of the game where making wish is not an option, a good way to collect healing items without having to spend money is to just talk to named characters out in the wild. For whatever reason, if you run into guys like Dr. Briefs or Launch or any of the other goofball side characters, they'll happily hand over healing items free of charge. So if you want to save money, that's an easy way to do it. Number five, let's talk about technical issues. We're talking on PC in particular, on consoles the game seems to run just fine. I haven't really seen anybody complain about the console versions this buggy, but on PC there's a few glaring issues that really stand out. For one thing, if you've got an AMD card, then a lot of people have reported the game flat out just doesn't work. Like, at all. Thankfully, there's an easy fix for this. You download the newest drivers from AMD and that solves the issue, but yeah. The other big issue is with icons, if you're on the PC and want to play using a keyboard and mouse, the game is still going to show you Xbox controller icons. This is something you can fix, you just go into options, then switch to the graphics setting and the first option you'll see is icons, change it to keyboard and mouse and that should fix the issue. Most games these days automatically switch that though, so doing it manually is kind of weird, but whatever, it's not hard to fix. Hopefully they'll patch that though in the future. Number four, more about sub-stories. You know how I said they can be lost forever? It actually isn't entirely true. You can get the means to replay sections of the story and finish any sub-stories you missed after beating the game, but there's other issues with these things we should talk about. Sometimes you're given an objective in a sub-story and the location doesn't actually show up on your map. Like the objective remains on the quest giver even after they tell you to talk to someone else. In these situations, you'll have to check your zones to see if any new blue quest objectives have popped up. Usually it's not too hard to guess where your next objective is, but still, sometimes they don't tell you. And there's other problems too, like this part where you need to get some fish for a guy. Your objective doesn't tell you what you need to get or how many. I'm not sure if this is a bug or uh, some sort of mistake, but it happens. And if it happens to you, then it'd probably be smart to keep a pen and paper handy. 
so you can write down what items they want you to get. It's not like the mission's bugged out or anything, you just gotta get items with no in-game way to tell what you need to get, which is frustrating. And that's a little weird, it totally makes sense to skip the mission. But just fair warning, if you want to finish every sub-story, some of them can be kind of a pain in this respect. And number three is Z orbs, the multicolored orbs floating around literally everywhere in the game, which are needed to upgrade your skills in the skill tree. The green, red, and blue ones are common, but the rainbow and multicolored ones are much less common. In general, it's not really a good idea to spend a lot of time Z orb farming. Just get the orbs you need and level up the skills you actually can level up, and then wait till later in the story to get more because the amount that you get as the story continues is exponentially more than the amount you get at the start. The further you get in the game, the more Z orbs you get, so don't waste time grinding them. Unless you really want the rainbow orbs. These you can find rarely in the environment from time orbs, phantom airways, and just generally as a reward for finishing sub-stories. These you may need to grind as they're rare. They're often required to continue down the skill tree, and most importantly, the amount they drop in the environment doesn't change. So what's the best way to grind for them? Personally, I've found using time orbs to be the fastest method of getting rare orbs. Here's one early in the game that's easy to find in the southeast mountain fields area. Go to Orange City and find the track behind the school. There's a time orb there. Activate it and collect the two rare orbs that appear. Now you can either save and quit or leave the zone and the time orb will respawn. Repeat as needed. This works for any time orb, by the way. I just happen to like this one in particular because of how easy it is to find and repeat. And number two, I hinted at this a little bit previously when talking about making money, but I think it's worth talking about it some more. Buy healing items, and after you buy them, be sure you actually equip them. You might not think you'll need them early on, but eventually you will hit a fight that it's just a brick wall, you've got nothing. If you forget to upgrade a character that you haven't used in a while and suddenly the game expects you to play as them and survive one of the many hopeless battles that crop up in Dragon Ball Z, having a few extra healing items can turn an absolute slog into something that's approaching easy at least. Remember, you can't change your loadout mid-mission, so always be prepared and have some healing items on you. You will be very glad that you have done this. And finally, at number one, you know that filler episode of DBZ that everyone hates or possibly loves? The one where Goku learns to drive? Yeah, that's in the game. Yes, you can drive a car in this Dragon Ball Z game, and it is amazing. You can even participate in races if you want. I mean, it's basically pointless because, you know, every playable character can fly and like really incredibly fast, might add. But it's an awesome addition that really shows that the developers are going whole hog on fan service this time. Sure, it's cool to see characters like Pilaf and Android 8 show up in Dragon Ball Z, but getting to drive around in a car as Goku is just the best. This isn't really a tip or anything. I'm just saying this game has got some weird and difficult to understand stuff, but if you love Dragon Ball Z, particularly the goofy stuff, then this game is absolutely for you. That's all for today. What did you think? Did you drive around in the car in Dragon Ball Z? Because it's very silly when you think about it anyways. Or did you find any of this other stuff useful? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, click like. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. And the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe and enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.